do this. Hey everybody, this is Geneva of whatever geneva's closet talk show please make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to geneva's closet if you haven't already done so right here on youtube and you can follow me on facebook at what at geneva's closet and you can email me people just get you to know that at geneva's closet 22 at gmail.com hey everybody happy thursday today is thursday i don't even know what day it is i think it's the 13th or the 14th i don't know but it is 12 57 our time west coast time you know how we do and so today we are look i already know i done pushed back this video a few times i already know i had other stuff going on but um this video is being done by popular demand uh you all wanted me to do this video back when i had did my steve harvey um let me see let me, let me, let me try to show this on my phone. Y'all going to have to bear with me a little bit, people, while I'm trying to get my stuff together with this phone and uh, showing the stuff that I want to show y'all. Okay, where am I at? Here I go. Here I go. Oh, and I got Miss Barry with me too, but I'll, you know, say what I'm going to say to her in a second. But y'all remember my Steve Harvey series, Saga, that we did a few months ago starting back with this video right here the steve harvey's um white slave master ancestors revealed and then remember all the videos i did talking about steve harvey's wife and sad checks remember we did the book read we talked about miss ella from um tyler tyler perry show and then we even interviewed mary mary harvey came on and we even interviewed her so if some things that you're not sure about people you are definitely going to have to refer back to these Now, I'm not sure what happened. I'm not even sure if you guys can hear me. Probably a little bit of tech. Though, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Look, y'all. Look, look. Oh, see, see what I mean? See, that's what I'm talking about right now. Trying to press buttons and everything else. But anyway, so let's just get into this video. Um, oh, and then we do have Miss Essie Berry with us. And the reason why we have Miss Essie Berry, because this story is right up her alley. And she know a lot of tee hee hee and parts that I don't know that she know. Because either she was, you know, she remember. She done talked to Mary Harvey. She just got some answers to some stuff. So we're going to be bringing Essie Berry in a lot during this whole video while we're discussing these things. But the first thing I am going to do is I'm gonna read an article. So yeah, that's how we're gonna get this thing on and popping. Now, wait a minute, I, now this video, cause we're gonna do this in two parts. This is part one. This video, we will be discussing um, Marjorie Harvey's baby daddies. We talking about all the baby daddies and who is Lori Harvey's father. Now, the reason why I said Mary Harvey said that it was Steve Harvey, because that's what she said. I mean, like, that's how she feels in her heart. I mean, she done went through certain situations, and this is what she feels. That, and, and then there was a specific picture that we'll get into a little bit later, a specific picture that Mary said, based on this picture, Lori Harvey smile and Steve Harvey smile, damn, they look like twins. Now, you want to know my opinion? My opinion is I don't think that's her daddy. <laughs> you know, I didn't see nothing that made me feel like that they looked alike. But that's what uh, Mary said. So we're going to get into it because that's a lot of questions. People want to know things about Marjorie Har Harvey relationships, Lady Heroin, a.k.a. Marjorie Harvey, a.k.a. La Lady Heroin. Matter of fact, let me say this. Marjorie Elaine Bridges, Marjorie Elaine Townsend, Marjorie Elaine Woods, and now it's Marjorie Elaine Harvey. So I'm going to read this article to you that's coming from um, Radar Online. Now, let me tell you what this article is saying. It's coming from August 11th, 2017. And it says, this is the first thing I want to read to you because I, because you need to hit his people. It says, Family Feud host has been covering up his shocking links to two drug lords who ran massive cocaine smuggling rings. But Radar Online has unearthed his shameful secret. Now, you may have already heard of this article, but I just want to refresh your memory. And it says, after a three-month investigation, Radar obtained exclusive FBI files revealing the dope 
kingpins were both married to Steve's bad girl wife, Marjorie, and she was deeply involved in their slimy underworld. Okay, now while I'm doing that, let me bring up some of these pictures. Let me bring up some of these pictures of Miss Margie. If we're going to talk about it, we should have some pictures of her, shouldn't we? Oh, yes, we should, people. Let me find some pictures of Miss Marjorie. Okay, here goes some right here. So let's share these pictures while I'm reading this so we can get the full thing. Okay, now we got some pictures of her while I'm reading. Okay, let me go back to this article. From Radar Online, according to documents, Marjorie's former husband ran smuggling rings that moved hundreds of kilos of narcotics between Houston and Memphis. The bosom beauty, who Steve wed in 2007, Steve Harvey that is, came under investigation by the FBI and the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency while married to drug lord Jim L. Townsend while married to Jim L. Townsend, who did nearly three decades of hard time in a bombshell exclusive interview, Jim, 68, tells Radar he was pressured by the feds to cooperate with their investigation. He says the lawman claimed to have substantial evidence against Marjorie and said she'd be arrested if he didn't play ball at the time. Marjorie was eight months pregnant with their second child, son Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah. At that time, Marjorie was eight months pregnant with their second child, son Jason. So let's find a picture of Jason. Let's find a picture of the children. Where are the children? We need a picture of the children. Um, okay, I got one with Jason. Jason, here go Jason, here go Jason with the grandparents. So we'll just go with this. She was eight months pregnant with Jason, says the drug dealer. He also feared their five-year-old daughter Morgan would be left without a mother. And we're talking about her daughter Morgan, and that is this daughter. Y'all see that one, the one with the with the braids in her hair. Uh, would be left behind without a mother if he didn't cop a plea. There was Marjorie and my brother, Terry, and that was part of the plea bargain, Townsend said. We cut a deal that they wouldn't indict her, that they wouldn't indict them. Yes, they were involved, he claimed, but I was the ringleader. Townsend was charged with attempting to buy nearly 90 pounds of cocaine. He was sentenced to life in prison and served 26 years before, served 26 years before, Barack Obama gave him an 11th hour pardon on January, in January 2017. Townsend claims his daughter, Morgan, arranged the pardon through connections to a big shot Washington lawyer. Meanwhile, Marjorie slipped with Jim, split with Jim less than five years into his sentence. She quickly got involved with another big time drug dealer, Donnell Woods. Donnell, people, Donnell, not Darnell, not Ronell, not Ronnie, Donnell Woods. Marjorie and her third child, Lori. We, we all know who Lori looked like. Oh, there go Lori. There go Lori with Winton. With Donnell in 1997 and married the criminal three years later. Around that time, the FBI had started to investigate Donnell and his kin in another drug smuggling operation. Rubbish! Donnell and nine others were busted for peddling more than 300 pounds of cocaine and about 250 pounds of marijuana. He pleaded guilty to a lesser charge and was sentenced to 37 months in federal prison. Marjorie divorced Donnell in two 2001 and plunged into a brief romance with Steve's bodyguard, Big Boom. Oh, where Big Boom is? Let me find Big Boom. Man. We got some pictures of Big Boom. And y'all gonna be like, that's Boom? Boom. A former pimp who admitted to preying on women, the temptress. Then began seeing Steve. They wed in 2007, and he became stepfather to her three kids. Meanwhile, Marjorie stayed in touch, stayed in touch with Jailbird. That's how they said it, Jim Townsend. When Steve found out, he forced her to end all contact with the felon. 
This is what Jim said. He made her cut me off. All those 17 years, I could call night or day. And she was always there for me. But when she met him, that phone call was that that phone was cut off the next day. Wait a minute, why I got Essie on here? I don't even know why Essie's still on that. A source says Marjorie Bad Boy Links explain why Steve, who is estranged from his wife, they talking about Mary, is now so worried about security. Steve may have a shady past, but it's nothing like the major league guys Marjorie was married to, the source said. No wonder he keeps armed guards at his house in Atlanta. He wants to keep these guys at arm's length. I said, really, bitch? Is this what was going on? Okay, so now we're going to read this other. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up this article. Now we did that. Now we're going to read this article right here. We're going to read this one. We are going to read this one. And this is coming from law.justia.com, whatever. That's the name of it. Okay, now let me pull it up on my phone. I'm doing this on two phones, people, two phones. And this is the United States of America plaintiff versus Hazel Little and Jim L. Townsend defendants, okay? This is dated for December 6, 1993, okay? Just try to let y'all partially read on while I'm doing this from the other phone. Defendants, James Townsend, is that his name, James? James Townsend and Hazel Little appeal their jury convictions for conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine in violation and possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Townsend argues that his confession was involuntarily. His confession should have been should have been suppressed under federal art crime, whatever. He was denied a fair trial. He also appeals his sentence of life imprisonment without parole, contending that his sentence was improperly enhanced by his prior state court convictions. Little, Hazel Little that is, assigns prejudicial error to the district's judges. Denial of her severance motion, exclusion of evidence relating to an independent criminal investigation, and refusal to order the production of certain notes, blah, 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 blah. Now let's get into it, okay? <coughs> On September 1987, okay, Townsend, Jim Townsend, that is, was contacted by Bernice Turner about the possibility of purchasing a kilogram of cocaine. Townsend agreed to make the sale, and he and Turner arranged to meet at a convenience store near Turner's home. Y'all stand with me, people. Turner arrives at the store at the arranged time. But Hazel Little arrived in Townsend's place. Driving a red Jeep registered in Townsend's wife name, Marjorie, Marjorie Townsend at the time, Harvey, it is, okay? Little and Turner then proceeded to Turner's home where they gave Turner a one kilogram package of cocaine. They agreed that Turner would pay Little $29,000 when Turner was paid by her own cocaine buyers. Little then left. Little's arrival and departure were, were witnessed by Officer David McGriff of the Shelby County District Attorney's Office from a surveillance van parked 200 feet from Turner's home. At this time, however, McGriff had not yet been able to set up his videotaping equipment. Okay, that's where we're at now. Turner immediately called her cocaine buyers after Little's departure and they promptly arrived at her home. One of these buyers, however, was DEA agent Richard Swain, who placed Turner under arrest. Turner agreed to cooperate with Swain and the two other DEA agents present and made a recorded call to Little, during which she stated that the 29,000 was ready. Oh shit, is this a setup? The agents in fact had brought the $29,000 in a Crown Royal whiskey bag. After Turner hung up, the agents hid themselves to observe Little's return. Little arrived and was given the money in the Crown Royal bag. She then left Turner's home and was arrested by Lieutenant Mitch Donovan of the Shelby, Shelby County Sheriff's Department as she drove away. In the Jeep, 
Donovan found a loaded 38 caliber revolver, several documents in Townsend's name, and the Crown Royal bag containing the $29,000. Little's second arrival and departure and her arrest were videotaped by Officer McGriff. All right, people, that's what part we're on. Now, Hart and other officers arrived at Townsend's home the morning of October 23rd, 1990. This is three years later, if I'm not mistaken. There, they asked Townsend for his cooperation in other FBI investigations. The parties agree that the officers were extremely cordial to, to Townsend throughout their encounter. Hart, however, told Townsend that if he did not cooperate, he would suffer the following consequences. One, he would be arrested and the government would oppose his bail request. Two, the government would press the longest sentence possible, which uh, the longest arrested and opposed his bail government long as possible, which might be life imprisonment. Damn, that's what he ended up getting anyway. And three, Hart will get a search warrant for his house. His wife, Marjorie, would be arrested as the agents believed they had substantial evidence of her own illegal activities. And his young daughter, Morgan, would be taken to juvenile court as both of her parents would be in jail. Hart told Townsend that if he chose to cooperate, he would enjoy the following benefits. One, he would not be arrested then, but rather at some future time. Two, his wife would not be arrested at all. And three, his daughter would not have been taken to juvenile court. Four, the government will file a cooperation statement on his behalf, which might reduce his sentence to 10 years. That's still a lot of time, but it's not life. The district court found that Townsend was given the opportunity to call an attorney, but was told that all deals were off if he did so. Dang, woo. Townsend did not call an attorney because he wanted, you know, he's trying to work with him. Townsend expressed reluctance, some reluctance there, to cooperate and was allowed to confer along with his wife, along with his wife. She told him, Marjorie, that Hart was full of it and vigorously argued that he should refuse to cooperate. Hart also allowed Townsend to read the affidavit he had prepared, which detailed the FBI's evidence of Townsend's drug trafficking. Townsend, reservations persisted, however, and he asked to speak with Timothy Dasananananana, the assistant United States attorney assigned to the investigation. Arrangements were made for Townsend and the, uh, the uh, assistant district attorney or whatever to meet in a parking lot of a nearby Shoney's restaurant. During this meeting, which lasted about 20 minutes, um, the assistant, the, the, the state's attorney, whatever, essentially reiterated what Hart had told Townsend earlier, then left and Townsend returned to his home with Hart. Townsend then agreed to cooperate with Hart. He signed a consent to search, a consent to search form and said that he wished to give a statement. The district court found that Townsend was given Miranda warnings before he gave a statement. Townsend made an eight page statement to Hart, which detailed his extensive drug trafficking activities over the prior several years. Meanwhile, the other officers searched his home. Consistent with their agreement with the authorities, neither Townsend nor his wife, Marjorie, were arrested that day. Seven months later, however, Townsend apparently refused to continue to cooperate and he subsequently was indicted along with Lil. Before a trial, Townsend filed a motion to suppress both his statement and the evidence seized during the search. Little filed a motion for a separate trial. The district judge denied these motions. The trial proceeded and the jury found Townsend and Little guilty on both counts. Both defendants then filed motions for judgment of acquittal or a new trial. These motions were denied and the district judge then sentenced Little and sentenced Townsend after holding an evidential something something hearing concerning his prior state court convictions. 
So that's basically what happened with that. Let me bring Miss um let me bring Essie in to see if she got anything to say. Essie, do you have anything that you would like to say? Child, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. um, I know we're gonna get deeper into this whole situation. Um, what Denise's gonna do is no disrespect to anyone, it's just about telling the truth or bringing facts aboard because a lot of people had this by popular man. I can say now, listening to what Geneva said about Mr. Townsend, and I've talked to Jimmy before, that, like, like to me, dope dealer and all, he saved her life. She should have always been loyal to him. It doesn't matter what he did in the past. It matters what he did to save you. And now we see she didn't have loyalty to her father's children. So how the hell would she have loyalty to anybody else? Amen, won't he do it? And she said it, and that's basically what she meant. Wait, am I taking her off the screen? I'm taking her off the screen. So now I'm going to pop this up right quick. Um, So how we're going to handle this is these are like different things that I found. These are things that I've seen. These are things that I'm going to show you. So everything that I found, I'm going to show you today. This is what we're going to say. So this is what I found. So Marjorie was born on Marjorie Elaine Bridges was born October 10th, 1964. She is currently 56 years old. And uh, she married Jim L. Townsend and Jim was born March of 1948. He is currently 73 years old. They got married November 23rd, 1989 in Clark County, Nevada. So they came to Las Vegas and got married on uh and it was recorded on december december 1st 1989 so i had found this little document and i said oh ho 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 so then there go the proof right there that they were married so because i wanted to see something with my own ass proof that they were married and then another thing so there's an article out where jim said that jim townsend said that he was going to he said that he didn't have no allegiance to Marjorie. So let me find that article where Jim said he didn't have no allegiance. Oh, it's not even on there. It's over here. It's not over there. It's over here. Okay. He said he was going to do a tell-all book. So let's get into this whole part of it. So this is coming from the Jasmine brand. Marjorie Harvey's ex-husband released a tell-all memoir. I have no allegiance to her. This is what he said in 2019. It's important for y'all to see that this is what he said in 2019. I hope there's no other stuff pop up while I'm trying to read this. In a new interview, the ex-husband of Steve Harvey, wife claims, in a new interview, the ex-husband of Steve Harvey's wife claims his tell-all book is finished and he plans to publish it. Former Memphis drug kingpin Jim Townsend was once married to the beloved Marjorie and he said, I'm pouring my heart out. No one knows what happened but me and Marjorie. He said, according to reports, we already know that. He said, I wrote two-thirds of the book in prison. I have no allegiance to Marjorie. She showed her hand. I'm going to tell my story. It don't matter if she knows about it. He said he didn't even care. He was going to tell the whole thing about it when he got out of jail. So we're trying to figure. So basically, we were trying to figure out where the hell the book was at. But then I had went and I did a little investigation because y'all know that I'm nosy and I check into stuff. And it all probably kind of started with these pictures right here of Jim Townsend, Jim Townsend and his daughter. You see him right here with his daughter and with his son. He's with Morgan and he's with Jason. And these are recent pictures. If I'm not mistaken, these pictures are 2019, right? Because I purposely took the pictures with the thing. But this article that, let me see, this article was written in this article was writ written in 2019, May of 2019. We go back over to these pictures. These pictures is November of 2019. So something transpired, people, from May to November. Because now we're looking at these pictures. He's with his grandson. These are all in 2019. He's there with the family. And as you can see, he's with his um, kids and his children-in-law, his, 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 his daughter-in-law, because the light-skinned girl, that's his son's, Jason's wife, and then the guy, that's Morgan's husband. He there with his grandkids, like they spending time, like they on vacation. 
You know, like this man that spent all this time in jail. I don't even think he, he just want to spend time with his kids. So I had wanted to know what happened exactly. Oh, I can't even do it that way. So I remember just a few months ago when I was doing that Steve Harvey series, I reached out to Jim and asked him what happened with the book. And this is what I said. I said, this was April 23rd, April 23rd. I said, hey, Jimmy, how are you? I hope great. I've done a series of videos on Steve and I've noticed people asking about you and your book. What's going on with your book? The people want to hear from you, Jimmy. And this was, like I said, April 23rd at 1211 or something like that, then he answered back the exact same day. He said, hi, Geneva. I know people are frustrated as hell with me about all the hype I built up about my book and never delivered. I met so much opposition from my kids by Marjorie against me writing the book. It sent me into, wor into a whirlwind of depression and uncertainty. Remember, I was also going through a transition back into society after being incarcerated for 26 years. I just recently made up my mind to edit, edit the book and add all the new unbelievable post prison events that happened to me. After having said all of that, then he said I was just recently tested for COVID, so I'm on quarantine, but can't concentrate on nothing but recovery. Also, I'm looking for a he said he was looking for a ghostwriter for his book. So I so I figured this. The man is 70 some years old. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he did want to come out with his book and tell everything that happened. You see what the man said? He spent all that time in jail for 17 years. He said Margie was answering all his phone calls. Then all of a sudden she married Steve and the phone call stopped. I'm pretty sure he was pissed because he felt like he took the rap and everything, because he said they had something to do with it. He was the ringleader, but they had something to do, do with it. He did what he felt like he needed to do for his pregnant wife at the time that was going to be giving birth to her, their son, eight months pregnant, and their daughter, Morgan. But, you know, now he out of jail. I'm pretty sure he wants to write his book, but now you got your children, you know, so I don't know if they was... You know, he tried to have a relationship with his kids and it was an issue going on with that. And or, or the kids were coming over like, Dad, please don't write this book about mom. This is going to upset or whatever. So he didn't even write his book. Now, I wonder, did they pay him? Did they pay him a little something so that he wouldn't write the book? But when I went on Jimmy Towson's uh, Facebook page right away, what is this? Right, because somebody wrote this in 2019. They said, hey, Jimmy, you doing all right, man? I was just on your page and listened to one of your videos, or should I say one of your interviews. It sounds very good. It's promising to be explosive story, and I can't wait to read it. But as far as the money, I'm still waiting on you getting a loan for the house and the blah, blah, blah. Uh, Yeah, just make, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, you heard what happened with that. Marjorie and Steve Harvey stopped. The book from coming out. Yeah, November 2019. That's when these pictures and stuff was taken. And when you go on Jimmy's page, you see as of right now, he's working out. He's doing his thing. I seen the other day he said he went to church. He said that's what life is all about, spending time with the family. So, yeah. And there go Morgan right there. There go Morgan, his daughter Morgan and Marjorie. And then here go another thing that I'm gonna just throw out there. I had dear, I don't, I wonder if there is something going on between Morgan and Marjorie, just because I went on Morgan's page and I don't see not a damn picture of Marjorie. All the pictures that they had of each other was like way back. Like you gotta go on Marjorie's page and go, I'm telling you people, go on Marjorie's Instagram page. And if you want to see a picture of Morgan, you got to go way back to really find these pictures. Now, Lori, she's all on now. Her birthday just passed, whatever she's doing. And the same thing with Morgan page. If you go to Morgan Instagram page, you got to go way back to find pictures of Marjorie. But it didn't used to be like that. Before when I used to go check their page, they used to be posting things about each other. So I wonder since Morgan has a relationship with her father, is something going on with Marjorie and her daughter. 
I don't know. But we all know this about firstborns. Firstborns know the most. They were there the longest. They seen the most. They remember the most. They heard the most. So we don't know what it was with a Jason and we don't fully know the, 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 the Lori. But Morgan, she's been there for a long time. Morgan remembers, pr probably remember her daddy. She remembers Lori's father. She remembers, she probably remember whoever else came in between. And um, I, did, I think she had her father's last name, Morgan Townsend. I think she did, but you see, she did. I don't know if Morgan changed her last name to Townsend. I don't know. I mean, changed her last name to Harvey. I don't know if she did or not. Let me add Miss Barry back in here right quick, see if she got anything that she want to say. Um, Essie, you got something you want to say? Yeah, I'm still yeah, like, I'm still no. one. When Geneva mentioned that about Mr. Jimmy Townsend, I talked to him as well. When I talked to him, he was doing good, but at that time he had caught COVID. Even though when he talk, caught COVID, he was still in a good spirit. I think him not being able to write his book was depressing him. But I can also say that clearly from what y'all heard from Geneva, that he is a family man. And I felt like no matter what, he would cho choose his children over money. And when I say that, like Morgan, Morgan helped him get out of jail. And she's loyal to her, her father, but she loves her mother too. But why do the kids got to be in between that the same way Steve did with Mary? If you ain't on Steve team, then he don't want you in the circle. So to see Morgan get Mr. Townsend out of jail and help, Steve was like, oh, hell, she on his team. So that went the way it should have went to the point that maybe they separated from that because it shouldn't be that they have to pick between the two. As you can see, he only includes certain people in his photos, such as when y'all see Mary Harvey. You don't see Mary Harvey with none of, no pictures with Winter because Steve made that choice because he didn't want people to take pictures with Mary and her child. They thought they would get over it and wouldn't see it, and these people would continue to do that. I hate that Mr. Townsend cannot write his book, but I do respect the fact that he would rather love his family and have someone that's going to be there and love him unconditionally, something that Margie could not do. A sister like me, yeah, I'm a civil rights activist, y'all, point blank simple. But if that had got caught up in that situation and a brother went to jail for me, I would still be buying him cigarettes right now if that's what he should be. It's all about loyalty. And if somebody say that's wrong with you, then it's wrong with you. But that's my baby's father. He walked with me when no one else would walk with me. So why would I be unloyal? So you know if this woman will turn on her own child's father, what the hell is she going to do for somebody else? It's what it is. Also, Janita threw a picture up there with Steve and boom. I was like, damn, did they do something strange for a piece of change? Who take pictures like that? And then, Steve, you know that boom, done whacked your woman a little bit. Now you went and took the sloppy seconds. It's all in the family, I guess, and that's the way they keep it. And I guess that's, yeah, baby. baby. Boom, what you riding, boom? What you riding, boom? What you riding, boom, boom, boom? Boom, boom, like he liking that type of head, ain't he? Uh-huh. Doing a little something straight. Oh, my God. Child, child, that looked like the picture when Mary said they was in the bottom of the basement in the dungeon. Y'all know about that dingling dungeon. I'm going to keep that right there. Yeah. He looked like he doing something. Boom. Damn. Now, this man went with Margie and then Steve. Y'all just passed the buck around. I'm just saying. Wow. I'm out. I'm just saying, that look crazy. How you, how, well, I, I'd be damned if I go up with Geneva and smooth all my shit up, be like this. Nah, nah, nah. Uh. Geneva, we can't hear you. There go Big Booney, Big Booney, Boon Boon. Right, because I got some more pictures of them because when Radar Online said that, Wait, did I oh, did I put these pictures in here? When Radar Online said that Steve, that Marjorie slept with the Boone guy, that she was messing around with the Boone guy before Steve, I was like, so what? Like, like, what did he look like? Because the pictures that I seen, I really didn't like. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and get them pictures a little whatever. But anyway, let me pull this picture up. Marjorie Elaine Bridges was born to her father. And her father's name is James Bridges. 
He is currently 86 years old, 86 years old. And her mother, let me find a, another picture. And her mother, Doris Jean Bridges, that is the mother. She is currently 79 years old, was born in 1942. And if I'm not mistaken, they have been uh, married now for 60 years. And Marjorie, there she go right there when she was a little bambino. Um, Marjorie also has a brother that we will get into. This is her and her father at a debutante. Because y'all see it right there. That's what it says. Her and her daddy. And then there it goes. Here she go again. This right here, she said this was in 1988, 64, 74. She was 24 years old. 24 years old. This is around the time that she got married to Jim L. Townsend. Because she got married to Jimmy when she was 25 years old and Jimmy was 41. Let the record show that, people. Did y'all just hear what I said? She was 25 when her and Jim L. Townsend got married, and he was 41. So this is around the time, because I think it said that they got married in 88 or something like that in Vegas. So that's the picture right here. And this is her, I guess, when she graduated from high school, South Memphis High School. I don't know. The people that went to South Memphis High School, everybody, shout out to everybody from Memphis. Shout out to everybody that know Marjorie. Shout out to everybody that know the Woods Brothers. Shout out to everybody that know Jim L. Townsend. Shout out to everybody that's going to add to this video in the comment section, because I know y'all going to add, add to it. Whatever I done missed, I done said wrong, y'all put, put it in the comment section so everybody else can find this out too, because we're going to get this story together. So we all wanted to know, so the main thing people want to know is who in the hell, who, who is it? Who's Lori Daddy? Who is Lori Daddy? Who is it? Now, first of all, this is where I want to give my shout out to Lipstick Alley. Because let me tell you this. Now, I had already did some research about Lori's daddy um, a while ago. And I had came, I had came up to some stuff, people, but I couldn't make the connection. Well, actually, uh, Lipstick Alley helped me to make the connection because Lipstick Alley actually had a picture on their site that they said that they had got from Twitter. And this was the picture. They said that this man right here was Lori's father, whichever way I'm supposed to be pointing. They said this was Donnell Woods. I said, is that Donnell Woods? I said, is this Donnell? Is this her father? So this is where my investigation started. So then I had to then find his mugshot. Because I'm trying to figure out, so where the hell did they get that mug shot from? So then I went and found the mug shot. Okay, I'm sorry, people. I'm just scanning through stuff, but I got to find it. I got to find it. So then I went and found the mug shot, uh, mug shot, and then these are the things that I came up to. So it said, Donnell, nope, wait a minute. That's not it. That's not it. This is it. Donnell Woods arrest, okay, said where, where he was arrested, okay. And then we get over here, and then it mentions a birthday, October 4th, 1967. It said he was booked in 2004, 2005. That's what it had said. And then it says federal detainer. Okay, what it say over here? It said he's five feet eight, five foot eight, 190 pounds, released to other agency. This is what I found that said that this was her father. Um, so what I did was, I was trying to find some, I'm gonna have to come off of this in a minute. I was trying to find the connection between him and Marjorie. And I was trying to find it, not necessarily based off of his name, but probably more based off of the name and the birthday. And then that's when I came to this document that I'm gonna show you right now. So let me share my screen. And the only reason why I found this document is because it matters how you type a person's name in. It matters how you type a person's name in to the search engine. So I was typing in Marjorie as Marjorie Harvey, Marjorie Townsend, Marjorie Bridges. But when I looked up Donnell Woods and Marjorie Woods, that's when I came across this document right here. This is coming from document report results. And I hope all of y'all can see this. Let me put it on full screen. Put this on full screen. 
Okay, Donnell Woods versus Marjorie Woods, May 11th, 2001. May 11th, 2001. Now, Jimmy Townsend went to jail in 92. Uh, he said within five years of him going to jail, him and Marjorie got a divorce. So that means in 97, they got a divorce. Um, but 97 is also the year that Lori was born. Lori Harvey was born on January 13th, 1997. And as we heard on that Radar Online thing, I think they said that they got a divorce. They married in 2000, got a divorce in 2001. Well, here you go. It says divorce, okay? Uncontested divorce. Circuit Court Division 7. We're going to go down a little bit more and you see a few names. One, two, three. The third name, you see Donnell Woods, plaintiff. Then two names down, you see a Robert. Then you see a Marjorie Wood, defendant. Then we're going to go down and I believe this is their child support, everything going on with their case. So we got May 11th, jacket label. I don't even know what that is. Complaint filed May 11th, divorcee, referee, May 11th. Marjorie Woods, May 14th case issue then you go down summons on marjorie woods may 14th 2001 we see a child support payment down here july 27 2001 a payment of 150 i don't know if that was a child support but we see some type of payment going on then we go down we see all of this other stuff this is all of them this is now going 2002 2003 june 10th 2003 completion of ccd i don't know for donnell woods there goes something else about them and then schedule event by the attorney june 20th you go down some more something about a pps i thought maybe that could be child support payments i don't know december 15 2003 marital dis dis dissolution agreement okay and then december 15 2003 final decree of divorce and then we have order for parenting plan final decree of divorce on december 29th then we got a payment that was made on march 12 2004 blah 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 we got another disbursement disbursement payment of $123.20 made in 2004 and the document ends with another with a final payment of $26.80 on March 21st 2007 what child is this it doesn't mention Lori Harvey name but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that they show in the hell show in the hell is not talking about uh, Morgan and they're not talking about Jason um they're not talking about morgan and jason wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute yeah they're not talking about morgan and jason because we know that those are jimmy townsend kids this is totally talking about lori harvey lori harvey so now that we done did this document about this so this is proof in addition to no 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 okay that that's her father but that that's not it that that's not it because i I have to reach, <laughs> but no, wait a minute. I can't take his face off. I have to keep his face on here. So let me exit off of this. Wait, did I stop the screen? Okay, stop that screen. And now I want to share my phone again because I want to keep his picture up here. Okay. Okay. I want to keep Donnell up here. Now, let me read you this article. Let me read you this article. Now, this article is coming from myplainview.com. And I think this is an update of 2016. But if I'm not mistaken, I think this was like 2001, 2002. And it says five arrested in drug ring investigation okay and it says <coughs> five people were in custody in memphis tennessee on thursday on charges involving an alleged scheme to distribute cocaine and marijuana from houston area to memphis now if you remember when i had showed his mug shot and the information about his mug shot remember it said texas it said texas now it says rodney mccristian and brothers rodney christian and, and brothers what brothers it's, it's brothers let's find the brothers rodney christian and brothers 
Oh my God, I got so many pictures in here. There we go. Rodney Christian and brothers, Ronnie R. Woods. There go Ronnie. And Bernard Woods. And Steve Woods. And it also mentions on here, it says Ronnie R. Woods, Bernard Woods, Steve Woods, and Donnell Woods. Okay, all righty. Were among 10 people named in an indictment. Unsealed in Luff, Lufkin, the names of the other five were not released Thursday. In the first count of nine count indictment, Ronnie R. Woods, Bernard Woods, Steve Woods, and Donnell Woods, and Rodney McChristian are accused of conspiracy to possess and distribute five kilograms of cocaine and distributing and possessing with intent to, to distribute at least a hundred kilograms of marijuana. What? The indictment alleges the conspiracy occurred early 2000. Now, when did they get to, you know, you know, now, because it says, wait a minute, let me, let me, let me, let me go back to some. It says that, so that means that Marjorie had to been, was, was messing with Donnell. Oh, so, okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I, well, I'm going to have to go back before I finish reading this, right? Because I'm off, wait, because my dates, my dates, where, where's all the kids' names? Okay, Jason was born in 1991. Jim went to jail in 92. By 97, their divorce was final. Just five years later, the divorce was final and she had Lori. In sep September of 97, which means she had had to already been messing with Donnell. So how long has she been messing with Donnell before 97? I don't know. But then three years after she had Lori, she married Donnell in 2000. Okay. So now let me go back. Uh, the, uh, it, the, the indictment alleges the conspiracy occurred from early 2000 through the fall of 2003. Ronnie Woods, Bernard Woods, and Steve Woods are also accused of transporting hundreds of thousands of dollars from Memphis to Houston to buy cocaine in 2002. Mick Christian is accused in two counts of traveling in interstate commerce to distribute a mixture containing cocaine. The men made an initial court appearance in Memphis on Thursday and were being held in jail there Thursday night. I said, really, bitch? Now, I'm telling you, this article is like from 2002, 2003. Now, I've been found this article. I found this article a few years ago. Just never, but I've been found it. I, I had already found it. But then <laughs> I get to doing my research this year. And I said, oh, hell to the no. Now, I'm going to have to bring this up on my phone. We're going to have to bring this up on the phone. So let me stop this one. We're going to stop this one. Now, let me bring this article up on my phone because... Y'all have to see this for yourself. You're going to have to see this for yourself. And that's because, like I said, when I seen it, I had to go back to, um, wait, my phone. 38 and, do, do y'all see the date of this? May 17th, 2019. 38 indicted in seventh month Memphis drug trafficking investigation. Now, mind you, before that, before that last article that I just read to you that I said was from like 2002, 2003, I had not yet seen the brothers. I hadn't seen any of them, but I remembered their names. I remembered the Ronnie, the Bernard, the Donnell. So I'm reading this article, right? After I done put in their names and this article happened to pop up and it says 38 people were indicted on drugs and other charges following a seven month investigation by the multi agency gang unit official said Friday. Officials said that many of the individuals have gang affiliations that include the Memphis mob on association and association that could result in increased penalties. The indictments netted an expensive and expensive cast of alleged drug traffickers who range in age from 20s to 60s. 
Then it says, five were indicted on charges of possession with intent to sell and deliver cocaine, marijuana, and ecstasy. So they done came up a little bit more. Guns were also found during the execution of search warrants. Among these, those indicted are three brothers, Bernard Woods, 53, Ronnie Woods, 55, and Steve Woods, 51. I said, no. Nah. I had to go back. I was like, wait a minute. Didn't I read an article? I went back to the article, put the names, and I said, so these are the brothers? They got in trouble again for the exact same thing. I said, these are Lori uncles. Lori Harvey uncles. These are her daddy brothers. So this is what you're seeing. Lori's uncles, Marjorie ex brother in laws There they go. Okay, so now I'm going to finish this up. And they older now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Good grief, who were jailed on a $2 million bond. All three faced multiple drug charges in addition to money laundering charges for Bernard and Ronnie Woods, okay? According to indictments handed down by the grand jury, the investigation was conducted from August 1st, 2018. I'm gonna have to write that down because be, now, now I'm about to show y'all something else. So I got to remember this for myself. August 1st, 2018 is when they start investigating from March 1st, 2019. Okay, I got them dates. Drug transactions were conducted within feet of Havenville, Havenview Middle School and Whitehaven and Alton Elementary Schools in Longview Heights. The indictment said those offenses can result in enhanced charges. Also indicted was this man, for the killing, for, for, for killing somebody, shot who allegedly shot some, shot the mother in front of her children. I said, no. Really? That's not the only article. Let's go to the other one. There was another one that added to that one. And this one says, 35 people indicted on drug charges and wiretapping sting. It says a wiretapping investigation. This is also May 2019. Landed dozens of gang members behind bars. Um, 35 people in all sources tell us it was a massive investigation led by the Memphis Police Multi-Agency Gang Unit. And since 2018, they've been building this case. They say it involves cocaine pills and marijuana. Just the whole thing, people, just everything. And it says three of the suspects were brothers. There are brothers, including Bernard, Steve, and Ronnie. We are told they're hot up in the gang affiliation thing. Well, at least Donnell, you know, Donnell says shit. You know, at least Don, at least Lori Daddy didn't, you know, come back up in him. Ronnie and Bernard Woods are accused of money laundry. Ronnie w w was arrested in DeSoto County and brought to Memphis Thursday. All three held on a two, $2 million bond. Basically, people. But that's not it. Because for me, I had to confirm that everybody that I'm finding are the right people. First of all, here go Ronnie Woods. Just like his brother, Donnell. There go Ronnie. Okay, you, you like which one is Ronnie? Here go Ronnie. Ronnie is the first one. Ronnie is also the one that was known as some big time uh, drug. Okay, matter of fact, let me go to that one. Let me go to this one. We're going to talk about Ronnie Woods. Ronnie Woods, th this one, Donnell Woods' brother. Because I think people are getting a little, some things kind of mixed up. And I'm reading this from Gangst GangsterReport.com. Written in 2019, the persistence in itself is impressive. And the more things change in Memphis, Tennessee, the more they stay the same. Fabled Memphis drug kingpin Ronnie Woods was indicted recently on more narcotics trafficking charges back in May. Woods, his two brothers, Steve and Bernard, and 35 others were all blah, blah, blah. It says, revered on the streets of Dirty South, the 55-year-old Woods founded his Memphis mob organization in the 1980s at the height of the crack epidemic. He's been nailed in numerous state and federal drug cases through the years from 1993, 2004, 2020. 13 and faces a maximum of 20 years in prison if found guilty in his current case. Um, it says, 
Now, what I found interesting about this is it says this particular Woods once dated Marjorie. I don't know if they're trying to say Ronnie dated Marjorie or if they're just saying a Woods brother, period, dated Marjorie. I, I really don't know what they're trying to say. But it goes on to say that he used his headquarters, his drug operations out of a, out of a series of car washes and nightclubs. And this right here, you see Ronnie's hand car wash. Y'all see that? And nightclubs, because they mention a certain nightclub. <coughs> um, oh, the martini room. There going. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, his martini room club in Hickory Hill was a rowdy hotspot popular amongst rappers, athletes, and dope boys. Memphis-born rapper Yo Gotti frequently named Checks Woods in his music. So I found that to be interesting, mentioning that they really are, you know, not only drug dealers, but they're high in the whole game, thinky majiggy majig. So now let's get into some other type of stuff. So I'm just living my normal life being nosy, because y'all know that's what I do. And I end up coming across this. Ronnie Woods got a Facebook page. So let's just do this. Let's go to his Facebook page on, let, let, let's just go to Facebook. How about that? Let's just go to Facebook. Um, now I'm trying to figure out how did I find him? You know what? I can't figure out how I found him right now, but let's just stick to the basics. They, they, he, he got a Facebook page. I said, Ronnie got a Facebook page. Ronnie Woods, drug kingpin. Woo, woo, woo. I, but I'm like, but I just thought that I seen that he was in jail. So here he go right here. Right? Marjorie's, uh, I mean, Lori's uncle, okay? And then here go him with, who is this? Is this Bernard? The other brother, the one that we seen in the picture too. But you see the date? March of 2018. Because you don't see no more pictures after a certain time. I noticed that I stopped seeing pictures of them like 2018. So then I went back to that article and I said, oh, snap. Remember that thing I wrote down? It said August 1st of 2018, March 1st of 2019, they were being investigated. So 2018, they were still doing their thing. By 2019, they not posting. He ain't posting nothing else. Oh, and this is the grandmother. So this is Lori's grandmother. This is his father's mother. She passed away. You know, I'm nosy. I seen those things. Um, by 2019, they in jail again. But they got businesses. They got a chicken business. Ronnie Woods Wings, people. I mean, it's called Wings Woods. <laughs> Wings Owner at Wings World Woods. That's what it's called. Wings World Woods. I said, really? And not only is that the own the um See, wings, fish, and shrimp. And not only, and then they got another business, Better Roofing. I said, so they got two businesses. So I was wondering if he was using, you know, because they like major drug dealers. Was the businesses a facade because they was really selling drugs? Or was they selling drugs out of the business? I wonder if the uh, police snatched the businesses away because they felt like they were using the business to traffic the drugs. I don't know. But now, for me, even though I done found all of this stuff, it's still not good enough for me and my man. Because let me tell you why. Don't y'all remember they had said that Marjorie was sleeping with cousins or something? So I was like, this is even cousins. So what are you talking about? Are you trying to say that Jimmy Townsend and Donnell Woods are cousins? Is, is that what you're trying to say? Because Jimmy hasn't said that. But then again, Jimmy never came out with his book. We don't know what the hell Jimmy was going to put in that book. So are y'all saying that they cousins? But then again, I just read this other article, this gangsterreport.com, and y'all mentioned Ronnie. So are y'all trying to say that she slept with Ronnie and Donnell? Like, I'm very confused on what's going on. So I wanted to see for myself, was there any connections with the Townsends and the Woods? And I figured that it shouldn't be. You know, it shouldn't be. Now let's go to Facebook. Okay, so now we're going to go to Facebook. And when we go to Facebook, the first thing I did was I went to Jimmy Townsend's page, okay? So then after I went to Jimmy Townsend's page, I went to his friends. And I typed in Woods. 
because he shouldn't have any woods on. And I kept seeing some of the same people over and over again. First person I seen was Carla and some other people that I had seen. But I said, okay, that's not good enough for me. I went to Morgan. I said, well, let me be know. Morgan got her page open. I'll snap. Morgan got her page open. I can go to Morgan Friends. Now, Morgan is a Townsend. She shouldn't have had nothing to do with no woods. Correct? Correct. We all on the same page. So then I say, well, then let me go to woods. And boom, woods come up. But I also noticed something pretty interesting when I'm looking in these woods. I notice, first of all, let me say this. There's woods there, okay? <laughs> and not only is there woods, there's a name in her friends that I have been seeing for a few years. And that is this name right here, Donnell Woods. I have seen this name for years and could not make the connect. I thought that this could be Donnell Woods, Lori's father's son, but I wasn't exactly sure. So what I did was I went to the photos. Of course, you all know how I do. And I'm checking out photos. I mean, is it? I don't know. Do they, do they look alike? I can't tell. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, I'm not really sure. Is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But what's interesting to me is this Donnell Woods that I have been seeing for years is in Morgan's friends, who I believe to be Lori's brother. So then I noticed something catches my eye, a Lori Woods. I said, Lori Woods? Lori Harvey, Lori Woods? I said, let me click on this. So I went to that and I noticed that this page if it's going to pop up for me, work for me, people. It go, it's 2010. I can't get past 2010. So I said, oh, this page is, oh, this page going to have some tea. This page is going to have it, but <coughs> it didn't go anymore. <coughs> it only went to 2009, which for me as a researcher is still a jackpot because this is a page that obviously she isn't using anymore that her sister Morgan is still following, okay? So I checked out this girl on the page and realized that this is Lori's friend in 2009. Lori is in the background. They're playing around. <clears throat> checked on the friend. This is a true friend of Lori's. Cool, cool, cool. So now what I want to do since Lori friends is open is I want to go to her friends. And I want to see, can I find <clears throat> this Woods who I strongly believe to be your brother <clears throat> in your friends and boom I find him in there and not only do I keep finding this woods <clears throat> I make the connection that they are in fact brothers brother and sister so his name is Donnell Woods but he has a different uh, the father is Donnell A Woods and I believe this is Donnell D Woods or at least that's what I got that he's still a Donnell Woods, but they just naming him. Um, but the middle initial was different. And for his birthday, oh my God, what do I have his birthday? And his birthday is March 20th, 1991, which makes him 30 years old, which makes him six years older than Lori. So now let me go back to my photos. Now I go back to the photos. Now we go to the brother and I see, here he go. So this is Lori's brother, Donnell Woods, and that's his mama. So this is the mom. But what I find interesting is this little girl right here. This is his sister by the same mother. So they got the same mother. This is the sister. Now she is. She was born in 1999, and she's 22 years old. I'm not even gonna go any further with her but what I found interesting about her is that she her last name is Woods too but she was born in 99 Lori was born in 97 this particular brother was born in 91 so I was kind of confused I'm like okay so the mother Donnell got with his mom had him 91 seven years later he has Lori Harvey and then, what, a few years later, you went back to 
Donnell's mom and then you had her because her last name is Woods and the mother last name isn't Woods. The mother got a whole different last name and she wasn't married to Donnell because if she wasn't, they would have had to get a divorce because we seen him and Marjorie got a divorce in 2003. So where is the, so I'm, you know, and really the pictures of her older, they look like twins. Donnell and his sister, they look like twins. So I'm figuring that, I don't know, maybe the mama went back to Donnell and had the daughter. I have the slightest idea, but I think I got some more stuff to show you. But before I do that, let me just bring Miss Essie Berry in and see what she got to say. <laughs> you see how my head's not like that? <laughs> She's just sitting there. Uh, 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 I, I had to get my had notebook pad. Number one. Number one. You said something you about said December something about 3rd, 2003. With Donnell and Margie's divorce. I'm just going to say this because I noticed that date when you said 2003. I also noticed that Steve, and I'm going to stop right there because I'm, I'm sure Geneva did the research. I'm probably pretty much, but you said 2003, Donnell and Margie got a divorce. I know for a fact in 2003, there was a house put in Margie's name by Steve. So how did that work out? He had to know it before 2003 because he ain't going to just trust nobody to put his name on anything. You understand what I'm saying? So that when we get to that part, I, I, I want to know that date. I kind of forgot the date when I seen Margie name on the house. But Margie name was on that house in 2003. You said December the 3rd, 2003, something like that was the final divorce. So you was kicking it with Steve back then, boo boo, while you was with Donnell Woods. Yeah, let me get my glasses. Cause I was trying to roll and see it, but there's a part on there. You said December the 3rd and there's a house that he had in Margie name December the 3rd. He didn't divorce Mary to 2005. So shit, what's going on right here? Y'all already putting names of people's um accounts. Keep rolling, Geneva. Keep rolling. There it is. Okay. So that was the order plan December the 2003 on the 15th. So they were still going to court uh december the 29th that's what it was december the 29th 2003 was the final divorce decree of donnell and margie that same year steve harvey put a house in margie harvey name yeah we gonna show the documents and she gonna pull it and what you don't see today you'll see on part two but i find that very interesting that this man is locked up in jail divorced her 2003 and steve put a house in margie name in 2003 in atlanta georgia is not what she's can say. We pulling receipts is what you can prove. Wow. And you know what? I have forgot about that too. I have forgot that you see. Now that's why it's good to have you on here. I mean, like she was just doing so much at one time. I mean, like it's kind of, you know, like, like I said, I mean, shit, you had just had Jason. And for the people that ask, Morgan is Marjorie's oldest daughter, Jason is her son because that's the order it goes in first she had morgan then she had jason then she had Lori. so those are her children morgan jason Lori are her children but damn the jimmy had just went to jail and then she was already up and then let the record show matter of fact let, let me let me let me go to something else let me go to this thing about big boom Let's go to this thing about Big Boom, the security guard. Um, let me remove this. Let me stop this. And let me share this. Let's share this phone again. Let's do this. Okay, which one are we going to go to? We're going to go to... This is also from Radar Online. It says, Steve's... Harvey's bodyguard shady secret passed as a pimp exposed. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey won't have to worry about making new friends when he moves his show, blah, blah, blah. A radar investigation revealed Harvey's right-hand man, William Big Boom Freeman, is a former pimp who has admitted to abusing women and even brags about his shady past. Big Boom's website bio says he preyed on women to gain a sense of power and self as a pimp though he claims his bad boy behavior in the past according to charges made by steve's ex-wife mary in recent lawsuit he still does 
He still does Steve's dirty work, including allegedly strong arming the sons, the star's son Winston to quit college in Florida and return to Chicago. Then he says he's a celebrity speaker. But what I want to know from Essie is, so what did they say about him sleeping with Marjorie? I mean, like, what was that all about? Not about, we ain't talking about the matches. We talking about boom, right? Okay, from what I understand, she had had some type of dealing with Boom before she got with Steve. And then, for whatever reason, I guess Steve still stayed with her, and he knew they had deal. But, you know, they're good about passing people along, so it's what it is. And you said something about Boom, Strong Army, Winton. So that's a true statement. There is a police report to that. Um, in 2015, Winton had made his mind up because he was tired of Steve to go live with Mary. Mary and Steve, Mary and Winter had been talking back and forth for a long time. Margie found the phone and saw the, the records of all the calls that Winter made to Mary. They sent Boom to Winter's college and snatched Winter out of college at 2.30 in the morning, caused all kind of ruckus on its own paperwork caused all kind of ruckus on the college platform. And then when when he was snatching Winton up, Mary said she heard uh, Mary say she heard Marjorie saying, take that motherfucking phone from Winton. Take that motherfucking phone. Get that motherfucker and break it. That's what Winton, that's what Margie was telling Boom. And then after that, they tried to say that Margie was uh Winton's mother. Winton didn't call Margie. Went and girlfriend called his mother, who was Mary. So that was true, too. I'm not sure what Boom is right now, but all the dirty work, all the dark secrets, y'all saw that he was all greased up. Y'all saw he was greased up. Y'all saw he was greased up with all that. So it's a lot of secrets that's getting ready to be re revealed. Okay, Geneva. Did I answer that? Did I get, get that right? Yep, you did. Now I'm going to read the article. Wait, I don't know. Do I even want to read the article? Oh, my God. What did I just click out off of here? I don't know. I just clicked off of something. Um, about what you was just saying about... I mean, well, we kind of already did that. I, I don't know. Let me, let, me, let me go over it right quick. It says, Steve Harvey ordered a hulking, fedora-wearing goon named Boomerang to kidnap his own son after TV Titan learned the boy was spouting off about how he cheated on his wife. So this is coming from magster.com, dated for April 24th, 2017, okay? It says, that is the shocking allegation to come from a world-exclusive national inquirer investigation, let me move, um, that obtained the police report revealing the chilling confrontation between Big Boom, the bodyguard, and Steve's son, Winton, at 19. In the report, Florida International University Police recount how they received a phone call from Winton's terrified biological mom, Mary, alleging her boy had been abducted and removed from his dorm room. From his dorm room. Wait, where's the rest of it at? What in the hell? I don't even know where the hell the rest of this is at. The rest of it done disappeared. Continue reading on the app. Oh, I'm not finna go to an app. Now come I was able to read the whole thing before and now, you, now they want to tell me to go to an app. No, I'm not doing that. Basically, basically, Winton had told his mama that Steve and Margie were sleeping in separate beds or Steve had other women, pictures of women in his phone that ultimately made Marjorie and them upset. Then they tried to go get um, Winton out of school, like Essie had said, and sit big boom and had a strong arm Winton up out of school. But yeah, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see more current pictures of him because some older pictures, he just looked like an old pimp. You know what I mean? These pictures, he just like an old pimp. But I wanted to see what did he look like in his younger days around the time that allegedly, I don't know, that she, that Marjorie was supposedly had messed with Big Boom. So I guess this is him in his younger days. Um, but I don't even know why he wore his pants up so high. Look at this picture. Why his pants are up so, up so high? What is that all about? This is the first picture I seen. I said, that, that ain't good enough. I need to see something else. Because that's making me, like, unsure on what's going on. Um, it was something else I was going to show.
yeah, these were just different people who stuff I went through. Right. I went through Wings, Wing World's Friends and found Ronnie Woods and Donnell Woods. Wing World Friend, Donnell Woods and Ronnie Woods. And then the Ursula Joy lady, like I keep seeing her. And then this one was, oh, oh there's somebody else. I don't know. I went through a lot of people, friends, but what we, oh, and this is what I wanted to say too. Don't y'all know, because I'm trying to remember everything. Don't y'all know the infamous shirt that uh, Jimmy Townsend, don't you remember when we first seen pictures of Jimmy Townsend? This was the shirt that he was wearing. The circle with the DB and the M and it say something on there. Couldn't quite tell what it was. But I know for me, I was like, he in the 60s? You better go ahead now. You like, he work out and stuff. Go ahead. 70 some years old, still looking nice. Ain't nothing wrong, won't he do it? But anyway, as I was doing my research the other day, on Jimmy, I happen to come across some of Jimmy other children because, of course, his only child is not uh, Morgan and Jason. He has other children like this is his son. And unfortunately, he had a son that went to jail just like he did, that spent prison time just like he did. This is one of his sons who did a posting that said that I am proud to embrace my past because it made me the man I am today. And um, I thank my pops, Jimmy Townsend, and he named some other people for having this corner and being on the side. So kudos to the son for life changes. All wonderful, fabulous life changes. Sons, grandchildren, blah, 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 blah. But then I came across this son right here and I noticed that he had the same shirt on. And when I was looking into this son, I seen that he has his own, uh, like, you know, like little record label thing and it's called Dirty Boy Music. So I was like, oh, how cute is that? Um, Jimmy Townsend was promoting, representing his son's, um, music label thing dirty boy music so that's what that is and here go him with and he has another daughter that's his other daughter with the striped shirt on you see his son up uh, on top of him i think that's his son and those are his the other two boys are his grandchildren so he totally has more children than just the two um because like i said remember when he married um when he married uh, marjorie he was 25 she was 25 and he was 41 people, 41.25. Let me bring Miss Miss Essie Berry in. Wait a minute, add to the screen. And there. I want to add on to what Geneva said, and I'm going to read something. But Geneva was saying about Winton in 2013, that was said that him and Marty had separate rooms, but that was a situation, I guess, in 2009 when allegedly he found that Marty slept with his brother and then he threw away the mattress. So you throw away an $8,000 mattress because your wife slept with your brother. That don't take the stains off a of coochie. I'm just saying. 2015, Winton found out he had used Steve's phone. This is what Mary told me. Winton used Mary, I mean, Winton used Steve's phone. And when he went through the phone, there were several videos in the phone. And it was phone, I mean, videos of him having sex with a white woman. Went to call Mary and say, yo, mom, do you think that dad will cheat on Margie? Looking at it. He didn't want to believe that was his father. And she said, well, Winton, your dad cheated on me. So why wouldn't he cheat on Margie? And Winton felt some kind of way because I feel like even though how this whole situation occurred, Winton does have feelings for Margie. I don't know what kind of level, but I know he got feelings for her. And I'm just saying for Steve to do that and his son to see it in the, in the, camera like that it probably took him somewhere and then be forced he was forced in 2015 forced to stay with steve harvey because he wanted to go with his mother mary so i just found all that to be a bit like messed up but i want to read something right quick when because there's a lot of comments geneva's going to do a part two to this so the comments that we don't get to address today we'll probably address it later on but this was one question this is what one lady said her name is Tiff Traveler 2012. Tiff Traveler 2012. That's amazing that you said 2012. So let me read this. She said Margie had to protect herself. So she got tall teeth. Steve to allow her to forge Mary name on documents. She will continue to do this if Steve gets found out. 
willing to bet she will divorce him. Well, I already know that Mary name was forged, but it's good that other people know that. And what I do know is because of what me and Geneva have now did and put out and just telling the truth, people contacted us from Memphis. We got a lot of fans there too. Memphis is a small place like other places are too. So you can hide and think that you are not going to be found out. You can be found out one way or another. And look at all the exposure that Geneva just did. Again, my heart goes out to Jimmy because I think it's sad that he can't tell the truth. I think it's sad that all these back by no good, low down dope dealer ex people want to sit up there and hide their hand. And he did the crime, but then he and did the time. But now you saying that he can't write about it to protect Margie, but she's not trying to protect them. But his kids got loyalty for him. So that I will always have mad respect. Do I feel like Winton would have went with his mother if Steve was not forced and went to the state? Hell yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt. He forced that baby in 2015, so went to like, hell, I might as well stay. Nobody's going to protect me. I can't call the police. You saw he beat me with a belt buckle and a sorority paddle, so what's happening now? I just look at all these situations that Geneva just pointed out, like the unloyalty, all the things that has transpired, like how you get to walk away from major dope dealers like that. You some kind of informant. You don't get to walk away when that's doing. All these men put their whole life online for this broad and being real, I know she probably had some of the dope money, and I'm sure Steve had some too. She had told the courts on some paperwork I saw that her people own all these different companies, which I'm sure um, Geneva's going to get into, but there was no money to back the companies up. You see what I'm saying? She said, but then she also said Steve didn't have no money. So her people had to take care of Steve and help him financially. That's in their divorce decree. So what money, Margie, says Steve was broke that you brought into the divorce that your people had to help him from the companies that you earned? So there's a lot of pieces of the puzzles that have not been researched, but Geneva done knocked them all down, one, two, three. And it's only going to get more intense. And like I said, and Geneva said, this is by popular demand. So I just wanted to put that out there too. When Geneva's clarifying about Winton, he saw some dirty videos and he didn't want to be around Steve no more, but it didn't matter. And they will never, ever put Winton on the stand with me. He would be crushed before he even opened his mouth. Not because I would disrespect him because I don't feel like the little boy is a liar. I feel like he's been hurt. And no one was there to save him. And that's what his end result has been. And his mother had to watch him being mentally, physically, and emotionally abused and gagged because she couldn't tell anything. And with Margie, she was a dope dealer's wife twice. When you dope and move dope and stuff like she has done, and then you was messing with an ex-pimp, and the ex-pimp was messing with you. Now Steve Harvey bodyguard. Now y'all just passing sloppy seconds all the way in there. But I guess if that's good for you guys, that's good for you guys. What I look at too is this woman was a hustler. She a con and everything else. You may have tried to change your spots. They just hid right now. They still dirty as ever. And there's still a lot of dirty things going on. And this is just to let you know and why I, I was fascinated just here at Geneva's um investigation because there was a lot of unanswered pieces but now there's unanswered pieces that's getting ready to be answered to this puzzle you can never say i'm lying about anything because no one on this map not even steve will challenge geneva nothing she's saying i doubt that very seriously what i can say now is looking at geneva's research and listen to her today and there's other things that i know that mary told me and things that i saw in his divorce that really that's why he tried to gag me and mary because he's crooked as hell you got somebody, you got a dope dealer wife from 2003. She divorced him in 2003, but you put a, 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 a big ass mansion in her name, Margie Harvey in 2003, and you were still married to Margie Harvey, I mean, Mary Harvey in 2003. They didn't divorce in 2005. Right then, everything about Mary divorce should have been open and the dope dealer too. She should be up on investigation as well. Because one thing you can know for sure, you guys, if you sell dope and you can con people, these are the two hustlers that can do it. And if one squeal, one going to fall behind the other. But I do know before this, oh, it probably will be a massive investigation because there was too much money to be made, too much dope dealer. These cats weren't moving weed, you guys. These cats were moving bricks, rocks, cocaine. That's millions of dollars. And at being real, at this point y'all saw mary y'all see mary there 
It's pretty much like Margie stole Mary life. It doesn't matter what's said. It's what's been done. There should not have been shit in Margie's name or nobody else's name in 2003 until he divorced Mary in 2005. And another thing, when Geneva get through, I noticed someone has said in the comments that it's sad that Steve don't be with his all his kids. Right there, Geneva. Okay. You know why, you guys? In 2013, Geneva filed some paperwork where he was still paying child support for the twin. He was so sorry and got all this money, he wasn't even helping Marsha. It wasn't until I got blasted in 2013, then he started going to get the twins and the rest of his family so it can make it seem like it's a big family. And that picture that Geneva showed of Lori, now y'all ain't got to ask who the pappy of that dead baby. That's the pappy of that dead baby. All y'all got to do is go back and look at it and see it for yourself. And, and this picture right here, I'm just saying, I know Geneva just showed us that Donnell was her father. But Mary said when she looked at this picture, she saw Winton and her got the same smile. Look at Winton and look at um, Lori. They damn pretty much, if y'all don't, they ain't siblings, y'all could done eight enough, y'all look alike. So Mary said that was always concerned because Margie has met Steve. I'm not sure when, but whenever she met him. And if Geneva, how she did her research, it appears that, I don't know, it almost seemed like Margie was messing with all three of them at one time. Yeah, okay, right, because this, right, I'm trying to remember, okay. Because I think Steve said that he met Mary, uh, okay, first of all, let, let's, let me just say this. Winston was born first. Winston's birthday is July 18th, 1997. Lori's birthday is September 13th, 1997. So they're only two months apart. So if they were biological, because I even see some of the people in the comments like, <laughs> like, y'all know that they brothers, so you... Y'all know that Steve Harvey daughter? Well, if it is, they two months apart and Steve totally got Mary and Marjorie pregnant at the same time. Um, I do want to say this, that based on my notes that I did when I did them videos, I got on here that Mary met Steve in 89 and Marjorie met him in 90. But remember that What's this in 1990? It's the same year, wasn't it? 89 90 that the DEA or the police came to um, Jim Townsend's house, and then in 92 he went to went to prison. So she already knew Steve when Jim went to prison. So I wonder, was she messing with Steve in between the time that before Jimmy went to jail, after Jimmy went to jail, between Jimmy and Donnell? Um, I don't know, but Essie just brought up something about 2013. And as soon as she said that about 2013, I was like, ooh, that brings me to something when I was being nosy. I came across something with Lori that seemed, that was kind of interesting to me. And it dated back to 2013. Here we go right here. I found this interesting. So I, I had went way back on Marjorie's page, her Instagram page, when it first started. When she first started posting stuff, 2013. And, you know, because I'm thinking from a mindset of, so you coming on Instagram, you know that you got Mary's son, that Mary don't have a child, you got a child, and these are the things that you're posting. Our son went in with some of his photography art. So this is what she's posting in 2013. Then our baby boy went in at his first art exhibit. He does photography art, which he does because he still does it to this day. But I'm just like, damn, bitch, why would you... You know, I mean, like, you know, Mary got to be looking at this feeling some sort of type of way. Then I found this and Lori jumping. I'm like, oh, Lori taking horse classes. But as she said in 2013, did, did, didn't you say something with Steve and the twins? Or Steve supposed to be paying something with the twins? Or, so I, I don't know. But this is Lori, Lori with Steve and went and Marjorie and, and she taking jumping horse class. And, and there they all go right there. Steve and I with our baby girl, Lori. My mini me with her trainer, Laura. But remember, just four years prior before this picture, before I, 2009, what we seen on the Facebook page, Lori was calling herself a woods. 
I was trying to see if I could pull up a birth certificate, and I'm fully not done with this thing yet. <laughs> you know, okay, Jay, let me say something. I, right I may here. be able to. Go ahead. I want to echo. Okay, so when you said that, I'm looking at these dates, December the 3rd, December the 6th. Okay, y'all check this. From 2012 of December to 2013 is when I was fighting Mary Case. And I found out they had forged Mary name. I found out they gagged Mary in 2013. If y'all remember correctly, Mary went to jail December the 19th. I had filed complaints on everybody in the gang. So now when Mary had, was going to jail, they were setting all this shit up. They was putting that out there so they could look like they were family. Back in 2013, when I would pull a Margie Harvey name, I mean, pull a Mary Harvey name, Margie Harvey picture would come up. Anytime I would pull Mary's name, Margie Harvey picture would come up. So this right here was just showing you guys. And Mary went to jail now, December the 19th, because Steve said she destroyed her life. These cats pretty much went in there and lied on paper for shit and tried to make it look like Winton was their biological child and they were going to keep Mary gagged up until I came about. So all the stuff that they had, all the money they had, that shit was before Mary. But this broad just came in and took it over just like she sell dope. She took them houses, took the same thing and did the same thing. It was just a little bit differently. It was physical material that this dude helped her cover. And he was probably like, well, Margie, if you help keep these lies up and you forge Mary's name and you let me put this house in your name and put this house in these kids' name, let me call all them Harveys so I won't have to share my big luxury with Mary. And he got Mary biological kid there, and this dude did that. I'm appalled. So really, to me, those pictures that you were just showing, that was a facade to act like they were a big Catholic family because me and Mary was working together in 2013 and I was not her POA, but they saw all the videos that I plastered out saying how they had took Winton, what they did. I had loaded the videos down in 2013, so they had to keep this facade up to make me and Mary look like a lie. And Geneva just exposed everything, the dope dealer wife and all, put shit in her name. And then really... The dates that you call and how winter was, if you really think back and look at it, and this a gold digger, a dope dealing wife, why the hell she wouldn't mess with Steve? She said that he was not cute enough because he didn't have no money. He was ugly. Well, damn, what made him cute to you? His money? I, I need to know that because she ended up with him. He said, that's going to be my wife. He said somebody going to be his wife, and he was already in the club with someone else. So how does that work? And let's let's back on up. I think Geneva said 1993, I think she said, is when Mary met Steve. 1996, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe in between there, is when Mary found out that Steve had got that girl Terry Smith pregnant. So he was shaking in a lot of places. Go. No. It was it was 89. That's that's when I got on here that Mary met Steve in 89. But I, I hope I got that right. Because we talked to Mary when she said she met him at, at the at the mall and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so yeah, so it was 89. Mm-hmm. Okay, in 89. So she met 1993. I don't know where you say he met Margie in the club. But he said Margie gonna be his wife or whatever. She said he was too ugly. I wanna what know want to know what made him cute after he was too ugly the first time. I'm just saying. You made that comment, but his money made him cute. Okay. Go, Geneva. That denario be making people look good. We know how many the type of rappers we got out here that ain't looking like nothing too much. But people be like, he's so fine. No, he's not that money fine. <laughs> you know, that car fine. That house is fine. He he ain't fine. Well, but, I have a question. Um, is Donnell still in jail or he out of jail? Based on my research, Mr. Donnell Woods is out of jail. Donnell Woods is out of jail. I personally, at this point in time, because I was trying to cut stuff off because I just keep on, keep on. Look, I'm actually happy that I dragged this video out for a little bit longer, kept doing the dates, because if I had not, I would not have found Ronnie um ronnie wood's facebook page i wouldn't have found them businesses i wouldn't have made the connections off of all of them on facebook having friends uh, woods and townsends so are they cousins i don't even know are they related i don't i i, I have the slightest idea they could be um remember there is an age difference though between jimmy townsend and the woods brothers jimmy townsend is what like 70 some years old 73 74 the woods brothers is like 60 something i think donnell woods is donnell woods was born um in 1960 he was born 
October 4th, 67. So he's currently 53, 54, something like that years old. So there is a bit of an age difference. So if he is a cousin, I didn't even know. First, first second cousin. Or if anything, they had to have known each other. I mean, yeah, all of y'all from Memphis and everybody selling drugs, Jimmy being the oldest of the drug dealers, but the but but the Woods brothers are supposed to be known brothers. Y'all got this martini room club. And then I also heard of this club called the Hawaiian Island or Hawaiian Owl or something like that. Because I remember Jimmy saying that Marjorie always wanted a club or something like that. So he had bought a, a got a club. But I remember seeing in some court documents that uh, I remember seeing in some court documents that oh shoot I forgot to put the man name some court documents that the club um, that the club got taken away or was was about to get taken away during when Jimmy went to jail and all of that type of stuff so she has so she was messing with some basketball player. And I wrote his name down. Ugh, I can't even remember. Let me see. Let, let's let's just look it up. Marjorie Harvey basketball. No one no can do not do that. Just let y'all know. I'm just That's his name. His name is Todd Day. So I had heard somewhere that marjorie that after jimmy townsend went to jail or something like that she was messing with some basketball player named ty day and ty day is the one who gave her the money to go do something with hawaiian island hawaiian hawaiian owl or whatever it's called now that's what i had heard but anyway let's go to shout out again to lipstick alley because i was doing some research on some stuff and i just happened to come across this article which they say written in 2007 that it said came from media takeout and this is what it says marjorie bridges townsend woods harvey and steve harvey makes a beautiful couple but she and her family personalities are thumbs down if they can't use and control you they have no use for you i said oh wow is, is, is this tapping into the family or something um they have no use they look down on people that are not gold diggers remember she dropped out of memphis state university because her rep was so bad she could not face going to classes get in touch with the q dogs that attended there at the time get the lowdown she has been dating steve off and on for the last 20 years so this person is saying what back in 1997 I, I don't 80 damn near 87 um it's true everyone has a past but her past just ended when she married steve she has two ex-con husbands the most recent donnell woods went to jail about two years ago still awaiting his faith if that long she married jimmy townsend the first kingpin he received life without parole three strikes had her trafficking they owned a club in memphis called the hawaiian island with which the feds froze assets on and she spilled a few beans got the club by backdating the nba player ty day who purchased the club back for her and then in turn she sold it then dated a kingpin ronnie woods now y'all heard it then now y'all know who ronnie Wo ronnie woods is donnell's their kin so what she dated a kingpin, Ronnie Woods, that got 10 years fair time. Then she married his cousin, Donnell. What? No, she dated Ronnie Woods. So she, so are they saying she dated Ronnie first? And then, then she married his cousin, Donnell Woods. Is, is this where this story is coming from? I don't know. I don't know. And have slept with Donnell's sister man, Jonathan Boyd. I, I said, what? This is somebody with some backstory tea. Steve bailed her out financially each time. They would send their families to repo everything that she didn't hide in her parents' name or through the business. That we will get into part two. So if you think we done, we not done. Because first of all, I have not discussed anything about her parents. Um, I have not discussed anything about her brother. Now, I said there's a brother. Who the brother? Do I got a picture of a brother? Have you seen the brother? We have not talked about the businesses. What businesses? What property? What are these things that Terry, Terry Smith was talking about 
in the book, man, man will lie when the truth will do. Because remember, she mentioned a lot of things in this book. She mentioned she met Marjorie in the early 90s. Marjorie was already with Steve, had money, kids was going to Catholic school. So, so where did that money, what? Did I find anything? Stay tuned for part two and you will find out. And it says um, everything in her family's name or through the business. He brought her a Cadillac truck and gave her a place to live. She also had a nanny for her children, which she didn't dump, which she dumped them on her parents. She never had time for her children. But I noticed she had time to attend an NBA game with Steve. She did. She did have her son with her. Where were the girls? So this person has been watching something because because they paying attention to things. She stated she didn't want to marry him years ago because of his lips. He wasn't her type. Hard times hit and now he's all that. She don't have time for her son. She sent him to boot camp. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Her oldest daughter is in college and her baby girl is mostly with the nanny or her parents. By the way, Steve has his son with him. Steve, make sure you have a prenup. This is this is fact, not gossip. I'm not hating. I just want to understand how you can say you're a man of God and cheat on your wife, Mary, then marry a... You should have hired a private detective before you made this decision. You knew some, but not all. You didn't leave home until this one said he loved and wanted to be with you. Now that both husbands are in jail for being kingpins, I guess she felt she was getting older and her options were running out. And the fact that her father pushed the issue and he's very ill now, her father pushed the issue because first of all, before I finish reading this article, we all know that there's a backstory with Marjorie. There's something going on with her, her mother, her father. There's a backstory. We all got a backstory that causes us to do the things that we do. Something caused her to seek only these type of men. Um, you know, she got king, drug kingpin men. She tried to make sure she did a little bit different with her daughter, but we actually see that uh, Lori you know, they say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. And I wouldn't say that with Morgan, but I would totally say that with Lori. Now, let me go on. It says um, the prenup. I'm not hating God. She don't marry. Then you should have hired a private detector. Um, don't leave home until this one said he wanted to be with you. And now that both husbands are in jail. Oh, the father ill. Don't get it wrong. She and her family owns a business called B2W Transportation. And she has her realtor, her, her real estate license. Did you know she had a real estate license? Did you know that? We'll get into that later, people. Part two. Stay tuned for part two. I wonder how much drug money is going to it. Steve knows the business. He knows when he married. Just wanted to give the facts after reading some misinformed comments. Isn't it odd how a husband went to jail the same time Steve separated from Mary? Mm. My question is, she have always... She always attending church faithfully while li living this type of lifestyle. I would like to know how does Steve feel trying to tell everyone how to get their relationship together and he is supposed to be in the church. Look at how he did marry, cheating and lying to his wife and now marry this. <laughs> Whatever. What type of role model is he for the children? <coughs> I thought he was supposed to be one of the few positive black role models that we have left in this society. If this was something that happens, if this was something that happened years ago, then I can say that <clears throat> that was in the past. This is not the case. This woman have lived this lifestyle up until she married Steve. Be careful what you say and do. You may find yourself in Steve's shoes. Wonder what Oprah thinks. Maybe she should invite Steve and Marjorie on her show so they can try to clean their lies up. <clears throat> yeah, basically. So that's that. Let's see what Miss S. You know what? I would have swore that was Terry talking right there to a degree. Some of the little verbiage that was said. Terry Smith, because she was coming at like, what kind of role model? Some of the verbiage in there can't say it 100%. But whoever the person is who wrote that, they must know Margie personally. Steve didn't do his research. 
He knew that she was a con and she needed some money and she do she would do what he say do. We'll go to our grave with this, but you're going to help me steal all what I need to steal and put it in bank accounts too. And Margie did that. That's a scientific fact. That's why they try to gag people, not tell people stuff, because what Geneva's saying is top hand information and it's all true. Absolute Mundo and here go Jason and his wife. <clears throat> right, and I purposely did these pictures. I was like, what the hell, Jason and the hair? I know it's supposed to be a fashion thing, but Marjorie and these eyelashes, Lord. Hot mess. Hot mess. And it's funny how they call her Lady Heroine, but then on her page she had Lady Couture. So I wonder if that's where they took the Lady Heroine from because she called herself Lady Couture. But, need to go back to that picture uh, of her window. This one. It was it was it was it was went to the speed of that green went to the green screen. That picture that right there. Right Y'all see how that baby is? Yeah. How she yeah. just pretty yeah. much yeah. went out yeah. the way. Mary, Mary noticed that from her son. Yeah. I mean, from her son. Yeah. I mean from her yeah. son. Um, Mary um, saw Mary that picture that and she knew that, look how she didn't want to have went in the picture. Why went to one stand on by his daddy in the middle? She was just worried about her. This is when they kind of first met and went to was a little kid. So I just happened to want to show that because those are things that disturb Mary seeing her baby coming up like that. This brought her have her kids always in front of her to the side of her, but you don't push the kid off to the back. That's the kind of shit that mothers look at will make you want to go off. Not trying to be funny, but she know why she married Steve and she had no intention of doing right by him. She knew he was another way, got that money. I ain't got to sell no dope. They be two men that turned over. They in jail. Now I can shut my mouth and do all the crooked shit Steve need me to do. And he gagged me and we're gone about our business. On you, Geneva. Um, You asked me, does Steve have a child named Morgan? So this is what we'll do to make this easy. While we're all on here together, we'll look up Steve Harvey daughters. We'll look up his daughters and we'll see what his daughter's name is. He has a daughter named Carly and Brandy. Those are the twins. Brandy and Carly. Here we go. Here we go. Steve Harvey has twins. Brandy and Carly. Brandy and Carly. Carly, Carly. Brandy, Carly. Brandy, Carly. That's it. He don't have any more biological daughters besides Brandy, Carly, they're twins, okay? So now, do Steve Harvey have any sons? Let's, let's, let's look that up. So just so we can get it all out right here. Steve Harvey sons. What sons do Steve Harvey have? Steve Harvey has two sons. He have Winton. And he has Broderick Jr., here go Broderick Jr. Broderick Jr. look just like him. Broderick Jr. And he has Winton. There go both of his sons. Broderick Jr. with the striped shirt. Winton with his chest showing. Steve Harvey has two sons, two daughters. He has biologically four children. That's it. That's it. Four. No more. Biologically four. Any more than that is his adopted children, his stepchildren. So those are Steve Harvey's children. There they go again. You like, are you sure, Geneva? There they go again. There they go. So if you ever see this picture and you like, wait a minute, Geneva said too, who's that other one with the blue shirt on? That's Marjorie's son, Jason. That's Marjorie's only son. Marjorie has one son, two daughters. That's it. Three kids biologically, two with her first baby daddy, one with her second baby daddy, zero with Steve. So there we go with the children. Marjorie's that's a very good question and we are going to tap into that a little bit more um well we're going to tap into that totally in video two totally video two we're going to uh pop get into that but since you did ask let me go to this picture right quick there is a specific picture that here we go i found it there's a specific picture that marjorie shared on her facebook page that we are totally going to get into in part two and that and that was okay well, let's just go through her parents a little bit her father and i think her father has alzheimer's if i'm not mistaken but don't you see her father got color eyes 
So this is where she get her eye color from. She get it from a daddy. You want to know where she get her eye color from? She get it from a daddy. Let it go again. Let it go her mama and her daddy. You see her mama got dark eyes. Her mother's last name is Rushen. W-R-U-S-H-E-N. Rushen. Rushen. What is that? I don't know. We'll get into it into the next, the next video. But a lot of her family is the Rushens and the Bridges. And you can even find them under Morgan and them too. But there go them. And then um, this picture right here. This is a picture with Marjorie at her mother's and father's home in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and you see she say, on the stoop, family time. And then there's another picture where she says, it feels good to be back at Memphis, in Memphis at my parents. This was 2018. Her, her parents' house, Memphis, Tennessee, in front of her parents' house, her sitting on the stoop. Then we had her, this is her mother again, right? That's just her mother again. And then I actually had another picture with her at some place, but I can't even find it. We'll get into it later. But yeah, there go her and her family again. But her, but, but you know what? Okay, so let's do this since we're on here. Let's go on Instagram. Because her family actually spends a lot of time. Wait, M A R J O. What? Why? I got to type in the whole name. I almost feel like somebody trying to block me out on this page. The reason why I got to type in the whole name. But her family actually spends a lot of time at her house. Because when I went on her Instagram page, I seen them, right? Because she just started really posting all of these fashion pictures. She just started posting this recently because ever since the COVID, she kind of been, you know, not really hit with that ugly purse. That ugly, that, that old ugly, that, that purse that she got, there go that. And that was July 30th. But here go I, her I parents. The sick, because remember, I just told you that they're celebrating 60 years. They've they've been married for 60 years. Congratulations to her mom and dad for being married for 60 years. You know, you can't say nothing about the true love. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right, and here they go again with Marjorie, with Lori, with Jason. But who don't we see? Morgan. Once again, we don't see Morgan. Even when I took this picture, this specific, this specific picture, and blew it up. I still didn't see Morgan in this picture. I was, see, Morgan is not in these pictures. But yeah, she spends a lot of time with her family, with her father, her mother and father. See, there they go again. They're, they're like always together. And then we see a lot of pictures with Lori popping out on here. Happy Mother's Day. Um, there go to mom again. But what you will not see on here, unless you go way back, is you will not see um, Morgan. You will not see Morgan on these pictures. But um, yeah, I think that's about it for me. Let me see what Miss Barry got to say. I'm gonna stop sharing this. I was actually, actually looking up uh, Morgan's month of birth because, like, I noticed there's a lot of Libras that these people pick on whatever way. But for her to be so level-minded and not take sides and still love her dad just as much as her mom, but evidently I see somewhere along the way she had to make a choice. And she chose the right choice because of whatever her dad has done, she don't hold it against them. And whatever Margie has done, you keep trying to make people hold shit against everybody else. And But to me, I was looking at her birthday to see how level she really is because of the simple fact that how she's with her father, how she got her father out of jail, and also how she liked to spend time. And Jimmy did tell me and Geneva, because I have text messages from him too, that his family is very important to him, more so I believe than money would ever be. I need your neighbor. Someone just asked me a question that, that I'll answer right quick since I was already on the page. Um, well, let, let me just say this. Someone said, if you came in here late, you are totally, absolutely 9,000% going to have to start from the beginning of this. Because if you're coming in thinking that Lori is Jim Townsend's, then that means you done lost the whole thing. That means you got to start from the beginning. And I just refuse to uh, repeat anything. Um, someone asked, does Steve Harvey have a foundation where he helps to take care of boys? We have the Steve and Marjorie Harvey Foundation, which is a whole nother research topic for me, people. Don't even get me started 
on any type of just don't even get me started but anyway it says um this particular page it says the steve and marjorie harvey foundation which is pretty interesting because um i i believe that marjorie name was just added because before it was the steve and Mar marjorie Har harvey foundation it was the steve and mary harvey foundation so they probably just erased the a r j o r i e <laughs> i mean erase the y out and then add the j o r i e because steve makes foundations with his wives so now it's the steve and marjorie harvey foundation anyway provides community outreach and youth partnerships and programs that cultivate the generation the next generation of leaders um so as you go down on the page they're doing something for hope for haiti we got boys on here talking about the mentoring program impacts for the future. This was just in September. We got this man on here. Don't have me and Essie started talking about the stuff we heard about T.D. Jakes, about someone who knew Steve, because that's a whole nother thing. Um, but yeah, yep, they, they got the foundation. There go Margie right there, encouraging young girls, encouraging the younger. What she need to do is tell her drug story. So just in case any girls are out there dating the, those type of guys, maybe maybe they'll be um inspired by her to make better decisions or you know because she can have that conversation she can let people know why she did the things that she did and then she can even do it as a these are the type of men that i chose at first but then when you know better you do better so now i end up chain pick picking in a legit man even though all of us adults in the background are like yeah okay bitch yeah okay the other two went to jail you didn't have no choice so you just so you was getting about sick of it your man going to jail so you just say so, all right but for the kids they don't know no better she can just tell her story of how i dated these type of men for whatever reason she would have to tell the reason and then in life i started making better decisions and now look at the guy that i have now he loves my children and look at us but instead she says nothing and you just got people out here randomly calling you lady heroine and you got me sitting up here doing research trying to tell your story trying to give um the people some clarity matter of fact i need a clarity for my damn self because i'm nosy should i want to know um and then other people want to know but we shouldn't even have to do that you can come out tell your own story and then i can just authenticate that but instead, I got to sit up and check every damn thing. You know, okay, Marjorie. But yeah, there go the foundation. Well, you said that, yeah, Geneva, that Geneva. You were right. That company that you're talking about, that foundation, that's why they gagged Mary too. That foundation had Mary as the vice president. Steve was the president. Mary was the vice president. Now, don't make me pull them damn documents to show you that Mary name was still on them when y'all was going through the divorce. And when I pulled it in 2017, I was still able to see it. And actually, I saw property in Steve and Mary Harvey named in 2017. That's how you know they stole the identity. So if they were to open Mary court records back up and somebody was to investigate all the illegal dealings, what has came in, what has transpired, hell yeah, be somebody be in trouble. Because what you cannot do, you can't take a nonprofit organization of any kind and have a, 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 a level of board members and just move that board member out the way like that. You have to get that that approval. And they didn't get no approval. They just turned around and did what Geneva just said they did. They put Bargy names on things and they moved Mary out the way. I, I do take, um, I'm glad that they're trying to help children. But when I see Steve around any kids, I always think about how he beat Winter with that sorority paddle and belt buckle and got away with it. After that, I don't give a damn what he say, what kind of father he was. He got away with child abuse. And that had been a normal person, it would have been a problem. So every time I see him around little boys, I, it flashed back in my mind what he did to Winter. I'm just saying. But for them to have an organization trying to do something for kids, that's, that's hands off. But really, that was Mary organization, and you just put Margie's name on it. So they just wiped her out, and they all could have been working together. We can learn to agree to disagree. And this was a man who had a child by this woman. And Geneva said something in 2013 I wanted to acknowledge. She showed you Steve Harvey kids. But if y'all go back before 2013, you're not going to see Steve with his twins. You're not going to see him with his, his first son. Why? Because he didn't give a damn. After I exposed and came out in 2013 and told all I told, he had to come back and put up that pretty image. And Margie had to lie with him to do it. And now everything is being exposed. 
I don't knock nobody for their game or what they're on. Well, if you was a dope dilly, soul coochie, whatever, that's on you. They ain't got nothing to do with me. But what I don't like is that you don't do shit the legal way. And then when you start being legal, try to be legal, you still being illegal either way. Because I know and everybody else know who want to cover it up. They all have done illegal dealings. And when Geneva exposed these people with part two, y'all going to be like, damn, it's going to make you wonder and make, make other people wonder. But what we ain't going to do, we're not going to sit up here and not put documents and receipts with it. And that's just what Geneva did. She put documents and receipts with whatever to she said. And I'm still looking at some dates, but I'm not going to say that about the dates because Geneva ain't came with that part. But when Geneva come with that part two of this video, you're going to see embezzlement, money laundering, forgery, and a whole lot of other things. And the thing about it is, I don't know how, how the Donnell and all these people got mixed up in it, but I do feel like some of the stuff that she may have gained was dope money and Steve Harvey covered him through his money. Because at one time in the divorce, they tried to say Steve was broke and her family had to pull him out of the hole. Now, how did you pull this famous dude out of the hole and you didn't have no money, you say? So there's a lot of still unanswered questions, but I take it you guys, y'all, to get them answered. It was one other thing that I saw. I, I got to go back and look at the question. For any questions that are, are unanswered, if I see them, I'll make sure I go back and write them down. So when Geneva do part two of this, you guys would um, be able to see it. And if you don't know something, go back and do research just like me, Geneva did. So you guys can put it out on the next video. This was just things that we wonder. And now a lot of things, it makes more sense. And when Geneva is exposed to certain things and I'm listening, there's a lot of things that have been exposed and then things start matching up. So people got to know what you do in the dark, it would always come to the light no matter how you do it. And Steve was a man to portray an image and Margie went along with that image. So they covered up. And as y'all see, the dope dealers took the, they took the loss of it. And then whatever happened to Margie, she didn't care as long as she had what she had. So I just find it sad that dope dealers or not, if these were your children's father and you couldn't be loyal. And then Morgan been in her life all this time. So it's a riff. And nobody, somebody said that. That's what I want to say. Somebody said we were blaming Morgan. How the hell are we going to blame Morgan? We like Morgan. I'm glad that Morgan went with Jimmy. Jimmy needs somebody in his life. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Because he's so dope, don't make him a bad man. We done had a lot of conversation on the phone. I think he's a very nice gentleman myself, no matter what somebody else feels. And look how pretty Morgan is. She's a beautiful baby. But it's something about her spirit that is, speaks out honesty to me. And that's a that's a, a great thing to have. See what I'm saying? And she loved her mother as well as she loved her father. Maybe it all come back together. But right now, she has to do what's best for Morgan. Ain't she pretty, y'all? Look at there. Damn, that's Margie on the left and her on the right. Damn, they look like twins, don't they? Oh. Oh, look at Morgan. Ain't she a beautiful baby? Margie, I know you miss your baby. Don't let Steve do like you did with Mary. Y'all already took Winter away from Mary and didn't let him speak. Now y'all um doing the same thing. Why got to be a blackmailer thing? Why do Jimmy Townsend can't write his book? I don't get it. I think I'm done, you guys. I want I seen all you guys' comments, and we really want to thank y'all for joining us, too. Like Geneva said, if you came in on tail end, you need to start back because there's a lot of positive stuff and a lot of interesting stuff that people didn't know about. And I thank everybody for our comments, coming in, loving us, joining us, and I can't wait to see part two. I can't wait to do part two, too. And I just want to throw this out there again. I'm going to throw it out there again. If you have any questions about all of Steve's Steve's wives, okay? If you have any questions about Steve wives, Steve whatever, what does Steve do? I'm telling you, I wouldn't lie to you people. I would not lie. There is a whole series. Why do you think I did all of these damn videos? If you want to know about Steve Harvey and his wives, because you just don't know. You're like, well, who is his first wife? Who is Jason? I mean, who is the twins by... And um, what, what did I say his other son name? I forgot. But uh, Broderick Jr. Who is Broderick Jr. and the twins by? That's when you go to the video that's entitled Steve Harvey's Wife and Side Chicks. That video will tell you everything that you need to know about Steve Harvey and his baby mamas, including Marjorie, including 
Terry Smith, who wrote the book, Man Will Lie When the Truth Will Do. All, all of them videos give a lot of good information. And, and then we got the book reads. And then the one the book reads mentioned Marjorie in the book reads. I mean, Terry mentioned Marjorie, had a whole conversation in there. So if you want to go back to get a better understanding of what's going on, that probably would help you. You can sit up there and just do a whole binge, people. Just do a binge of the damn video. Very interesting. And then if you didn't watch Mary interview, check out her interview. Mary came on here too. One was just an audio because Mary just needed to come and say something. And then she actually came on and showed her face and then spoke her truth and got sensitive because it was a lot that she had to say. But y'all can go check out those videos. I can't wait for part two too. And I want you all to check out my shirt, my red, free, my Fred rerun berry shirt. Y'all know this Essie Hood, uh, uh, Essie Husband. Look at him. Look at him. Fred rerun berry. Be blessed. Here go his signature. Be blessed rerun 2003. And you know that it is coming up to the anniversary of not not only is Essie Berry. The window up, Fred rerun Barry. Birthday coming up this month. In a few, in what? In like a week or something? In like a week and a half? It's coming up soon. Not only is her birthday coming up, but the anniversary of when and her, her and Fred rerun Barry got married and when he passed away. It's all coming up in October. So the end of October can be a little sensitive for my sister. So I'm just telling you, and for, um, in remembrance of Frere Rerun Berry, we will be selling these shirts in the last week of October in remembrance of Frere Rerun Berry. I'll be giving you the information on that. Make sure you be checking out Janine's Closet. I'll be putting it on there because it's only before a limited time. And um, then, yeah, me and Essence should be coming on here to do a video about me and, I mean, about Freya Rerun Barry and things like that. Make sure you check out for part two. Let's see what Miss Barry have to say. Miss Barry, do you have anything to say before we get off of here? You know what, my you know, time, my time. Yeah, I wanted to say something in the beginning when I saw you with Fred's shirt on, and I just, the only thing I could do is smile. I can't clearly say this whole month is a sense of time for me, so thank you for mentioning that. I love the shirt. I just love the shirt. I mean, that's him all the way, um, and it's an honor for me to even be a part of your, your uh, show and, you know, just be my sister, my friend, and just doing that because I saw the hat in the beginning and I was going to say something, so I really thank you for that. And y'all, we are going to share some things all about rerun, you know, and who he was because we did things, but it was like a little different. Girl, I want to dance with you while you were doing it. Go ahead, girl. Model. To the left, you'll see him with the signature below. And it says 2003, the original Red Fred Rerun Berry t shirt with the orange beret with the orange hat. Come on, you guys. Come on. With the orange shirt. Go on, girl, and model it. Hey, hey, hey. That makes me smile. I really appreciate that. I'm it's excited. It's soft. It fits me perfectly. You will be able to purchase. I will give you all the information on where to purchase them. Because I just want to make sure. Because not only will you be able to purchase the shirts, you'll be able to purchase it as a mug. Y'all, what you thought I just had the shirt without the mug? Come on now, people. Stop playing with me. We got the shirt and the mug. The shirt and the mug. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, I'll be giving all the information about that so you all can go get yours. We really enjoy it. Let me just give a shout out to a few people. Hey, Baby Red. Love Mifro. Mifro. Linda Dorsey. Hey, Linda Girl. Lara O'Neill. Um, there was somebody that was in here that was helping me out. <laughs> she was just helping me out because people was asking questions and she was just like, here go the answer. Here go the answer. Hey, Michelle, one love saves the world for goodness sake. Um, Valerie, Blue Butterfly, Ceylon, Red Bone. I don't even see her name. I can't even remember. It was someone that kept, oh, Sherelle 73. Thank you so much, Sherelle 73, A. Lauren and Willie and Minor and Jessica Parker and everyone else that came up in here, Miss Williams. We really do appreciate it. Make sure you stay around for part two. Miss Barry, do you have anything else that you wanted to say? No, I heard that someone said they want a mug. So Janita said we were going to do a, a whole skit about a whole thing about rerun. When we do that, we'll have the shirts and everything. Janita sent me a shirt, y'all, but my boobs were too big. 
I couldn't get in it, y'all. It just did. It won't take all this bubble and brush sugar, so I can't wear mine. I'm going to frame it. And then I guess once we get ready or whatever, i get one for myself. I just couldn't fit all this luptionness up in it. I'm just saying. Go ahead. God bless you guys, and thank y'all for joining us. Thank you so much, people. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you all. And, you know, thank you so much for joining us. And can you make sure that you like and share this video? Again, stay ready for part two. Part two, we talking about businesses. And we're going to go a little bit deeper with the family, find out who the brother and stuff is. And any other information that SE want to mention about extortions and stuff like that, we're going to throw that up in there too. Might as well. And then we're going to end this Steve Harvey saga after that. After that, I would have said everything. I don't know what else there is for me to say. But while you are watching me and for the people that were sitting there not saying anything, you didn't even say nothing in the comments, but that's quite all right. Could you at least like and share this video and subscribe to Janine? was closet if you haven't already done so right here on youtube and you can follow me on facebook at what at geneva's closet and you can email me or essie barry at geneva's closet 22 at uh, gmail.com or civil rights activist at gmail civil rights activist essie barry at gmail.com there's two of us people it's two of us make sure you go follow miss barry too at essie barry on youtube and facebook you all have a fabulous day and we will talk to you later people bye, love you guys. bye. have a great fabulous wonderful day love you people thank you for joining me stay tuned for part two part two you don't want to miss it part two bye Ooh, we still yeah. on. Yeah. We, we, oh, are. we still oh, on. We still. Oh, yeah. We ain't left yet. <laughs> is we all? Come on now, cut it off. Is is we we still on? Lord Jesus. What happened?